Hello and welcome to Kickstart. In this video, we're going to be going through our solid modeling tools. Now, what I hear you ask is solid modeling. Well, thank you for asking, random stranger, and let me tell you. Solid modeling is a module within Microbulm that allows us to convert our 3D objects, whether drawn through AutoCAD or even drawn and imported in through some third-party software, and convert it into a Microbulm product. From that Microbulm product, we can optimize to a CNC machine, generate reports, among other things that we will generally do with a Microbulm product. In this video, we are gonna be going through a few solid modeling tools to help us along the way, as well as go through a few settings to make sure that we are optimizing correctly. As usual, I'm your partner in crime, Ludwig from Markovalm, and before I muck up this intro anymore, let's kickstart this video. So here we are back in our programmable playground that is Markovalm Toolbox. The first thing we're gonna be going through here is our solid analyzing settings. To get to those, we need to go over to Toolbox Setup, and we need to go over to Options. Now within our options interface, we're gonna go over to the solid analyzation tab. And within this tab that we can control settings for solid model analyzing. These settings here pretty much dictate what microvellum is gonna consider and a machinable part or not based on the 3D solid that it analyzes. For example, we have a material thickness minimum and maximum range. What that means is if it sees a 3D solid that's outside of this parameter, it's not gonna be able to optimize it to a CNC machine. You'll still see it visually, but it's only gonna come in as a block. For example, at the moment, my minimum setting is five mil. So if I draw in a material that's three mil thick, it's not gonna be able to optimize that to a CNC machine because it's outside that minimum maximum range. Ditto for part size. If it sees a part size width or length that's outside that range, again, we're gonna see it visually, but it's not gonna optimize it to a CNC machine. Drill hole diameters, well, if it sees a hole in our 3D solid, and again, if it's outside our parameters, it's not gonna be able to pick up the tool to correspond to that hole. It's not gonna machine that hole, you're just gonna be left with a pretty much holeless panel, not what we want. So again, we can adjust these based on the tools that you have on your CNC machine. Our pocket penetrating cutouts is an area where if we have a cutout that falls within this maximum area, it will pocket out that cutout. If it's outside that range, say bigger, it's just gonna do one big cutout, one big pass. Our non-planar parts. This allows us to add an oversized dimension, which pretty much oversizes any curved or bent parts, which will make it easier for manual machining. We have an exception part color, which means that if you see a part after you solid model analyze it, and it's this color here, in our case red, it's telling us that it didn't analyze that part, meaning that it's not a part that's gonna be sent to the CNC machine when we optimize it for processing. We have miters, which we can obviously set to be either just drawing only, just for visual purposes, or we can actually have it machined if we have the corresponding miter bit for it and we have a tool selection area, which is telling us to direct ourselves to our tool file, which we're gonna do quite quickly. We're gonna go over to this tool file tab over here, and I'm gonna use my sample IPP tool file over here. I'm gonna go over to my router bits over here, and these settings over here is pretty much where we need to set up what tools we're gonna to be using for what kind of machining within our solid model parts, or our custom build parts as well, through the module custom product builder. We can obviously adjust what the default router is gonna be, the pocketing router, our aggregate tool, as well as what tools are gonna to be used for special circumstances, such as dado tools for our draw boxes. But now we're gonna cancel these guys here, and we're gonna go over to the tab aptly named solid modeling. And these are the tools that we're gonna be going through in our subsequent videos. So the first one that we have is our solid modeling tool. When you click on that, we're gonna get a nice happy pop-up over here. So our solid modeling tools is what we're gonna be using to create our 3D solid, whether it's using our extruded product builder or our custom product builder. We've got a few tabs. The tree view is where we can actually create that part. Custom tools is where we can edit and customize our custom built product. And our extruded tools where we can edit and adjust our extruded product. We have a smart layer manager where through this interface over here, we can create AutoCAD layers, which has machining and setup specifications to correspond with the parts that we want to extrude. 
we have our solid model properties, which are properties that we can set up from the word go. So when we create our custom build product, we've got our settings ready to rock and roll. Things like our door gaps, shelf gaps, dowel rebates, anything like that is gonna be controlled through here. We also have our actual solid model analyzer tool. This is the tool that we're gonna be using to actually convert the 3D solid that we have onto our screen into a microbell product. And we also have a few tools below that to isolate, hide, and show our models in our screen. Make it a bit easier for us to adjust, make it a bit easier for us to draft, among other things. So hopefully from this video, you have now set up your solid modeling tools and your solid modeling settings to work from the word go once we hit that solid model analyzer button. As usual, thank you so much for joining me in this video. As usual, I am Ludwig from Markerville, and as usual, take care and have a wonderful day. Thank you.